Hello and welcome to adding the PowerFlex 525 to your RS Logics 5000 project. Um, today we're going to be using a Control Logics L61. That's a 1756 L61. We're going to use version 20. Um, we're going to call this uh, training. I have a lot of training, but this one will work. If I can spell today. Training PF 525. I'm using a seven slot chassis and the processors in slot zero. We're not using any production, no redundancy. And we'll go ahead and start off with creating the project. Now, if you haven't, you might want to go open yours and follow right along. Um, if you're doing this in a plant, wherever, it's going to be the same principle as adding it on. We need to add a communication port. I could download this right now uh, using. Uh, using the communication path because I do have it online and it's right here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and what that'll do is that's gonna allow us to go online with the controller and go ahead and do module discovery and be able to find the modules in the program and we're only gonna put a few of them in we're not gonna need all of them that I have in the chassis so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and download it and we're downloading it to two thirty to uh, our IP address. There's nothing in this program. We're just downloading an empty program. We'll switch it back to run. We're going to do this all online as if you were running in the plant. Uh, my laptop does not like Camtasia. <laughs> all right, we're going to do module discovery. So, in your I/O tree, we're going to add it. We need to add it to our network card but we're gonna do this a little different we're gonna we're gonna have an automation network and then we're gonna have a private network we're gonna add the PowerFlex drive to our private network module discovery do this while you're online populate a list of everything that I have in here I've got two Ethernet cards and a device net card some output cards we're only gonna worry about these two so we'll go ahead and create this one we're gonna call this the automation network because this is the one that's on your factory floor so it'd be automation and the nice thing about doing the module discovery is it populates everything that you already have uh, so you don't have to change anything go in and change it unless you want to use direct match key and etc puts the IP address that's already in it that's all we need And as you can tell, it updates says that there's no other action needed. We're going to add the second card. This is our private network. Its address is 192.168.1.2, and that's what we're going to use. This is our private network, or your sub network. However you want to say it, but I just use the private network. And it's in slot two. Everything should be fine. Add, we'll go ahead and add that. That's all we're going to need. We don't need the rest of the cards. As you can tell, we added online. There's no errors. Everything's fine. Now, we're going to add a PowerFlex 525 with embedded Ethernet port. Now, if you have not done this already, this is one thing that you need to do. You're going to want to go to rockwellautomation.com. You're going to want to download... And the RAPF5 class add-on profiles. This this here will put all the profiles in that you need. It'll update RS links when you add the drive and everything else. Now, if you watched previous video, you'll see that in that video we set up the PowerFlex 525 and how to do it. And now that I have it out there and I have it online, we need in order to add the drive or discover the drive. We're going to want to go ahead and go and add it. So we're going to go ahead and come over and we're going to add it to our processor. As you can tell, I've already added this uh, IP address in. Uh, if you want, I can back up and go through and re-add everything so you can see how we found it. But we added two cards. And that is, of course, the first Ethernet card, which we called Automation Network. And then a the second one, which is our private network. We're going to do is we're going to go into properties. 
Now the drive that I set up has an IP address of 192.168.1.102. So we're going to use that drive. We're going to hit apply. We're going to hit OK. Populates a list. Here's your 525. It just populated. It's online. We see it. So we're going to go over here. We'll do module discovery underneath the private network. There it is. Another way I'm going to show you how to do this, and we'll do it the harder way. You can create, you can hit create, and it automatically create it with everything that it has with revision two. But we're going to do it the other way in case you're on older versions that don't support it. We're going to go ahead and right click. We're going to add a new module. So bring up a list. We're going to type in PowerFlex, and you'll scroll through the list. 525, and we're going to use the one with embedded Ethernet. There are different options. You can have dual port other but the one that we're using is has the single embedded ethernet port which is probably going to be the most typical one we're going to create it it's going to go ahead and give us the newest reversion revision we'll name this i don't know pump one works for me now, if we would have discovered it, it would have populated it up here already for you. We know what it is. We'll go ahead and put that in. It was 102. We're gonna, we want to change this. We do. We're going to go online, and what we want to do is we're going to match the drive. So, the first thing we'll do is we'll go match the drive, and you'll go into... Uh, it'll bring up the RS links. You'll pull up where it's at. In training, it's under the automation network. Then it's down here underneath uh, your second ethernet card we have 102 earlier I had another one in here when we use 102 hit OK upload the entire device yes here's what it did what we did earlier it went ahead and added it did basically the same thing it changed the address changed subnet here's, here's everything that we had in the project before this is what the connected device is. This is what it changed it to. Now that that happened, we want to create a database. The database will upload all the all the values from the drive and store them in your project. And that's what we want to do. This may be required device reset. If you're running, probably the best bet is not to do this. But if you're not running, you're adding it. Simple. Go ahead and do it. It's not going to cause you any harm. It takes a little bit. Of course, there's a lot of parameters to read. That's it. These changes will cause module data types and properties to change on match drive. Change module definition? Yes. Everything is matched. Now if we go to the drive, we don't have to go online. It's already online because it matched everything. No status feedback, nothing. We're not doing anything yet. Why? Because it's not finished in the project, so it's not going to populate anything. Hit OK. Yes. We want to go online with it. We'll close this. We don't need it no more. Now that you've created your profile, now you can go back into it. Go back to the drive, and now it'll update your statuses. It's faulted. Why is it faulted? Excuse me. I'm going to fault. That Ethernet loss. When we did a download to the processor, it was already connected to an, another program that was in there, so it faulted under an Ethernet loss. We can clear the faults here, clear the fault queue. We're not going to do that. We're going to do it through uh, through the program. So we'll go to parameters. Easiest way to set these up quickly online. Use the drop down list. Go to basic program. Now the basic program will have all your basic parameters that you really need to change. Pull them all out. Match your motor. Uh, your acceleration time. Decel time. If you want no decel time. I advise you to put in 0.10 that'll help keep 
your drive from Fulton. There may be some other things you can do, but that's what I found, and that's what uh, Rockwell cited, suggested at one time or another. My stop mode is at ramp, so I'm ramping down. If I put that on coast. Uh, start source, this is what you'll change. I believe out of the box it'll be set on on uh, digital and on the terminal block. But we change it to Ethernet IP, and we want our speed reference in Ethernet IP. Minimum frequency, maximum frequency, and these are all things you need to change just to do a simple setup. Anything else is on you. Everything looks fine there. We're going to go to the main program. We're going to do a quick startup procedure. I'm just going to call this your start, up, start button, start push button, create. We want to start the drive. So there's your pump. Oops, we don't want the input, we want the output. So we're going to take the start, add another rung. So if it's not started, then we are at stop. Scroll up one, use a stop default direction. Uh, I'll show you in the tags here in just a moment. Another thing we'll throw in real quick. Remember this isn't conventional way. This is not a good way to set up a program to do you, you want to add different routines and stuff. Make it really clear, really crisp so people can follow through with these. We're just doing this quickly so I can show you how to set it up and show you that it works. What we're going to do is we want to use the same thing here but we're going to reset the drive and we're going to use clear fault. You always, somebody always has something on a panel view screen or a regular push button. <clears throat> um, excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and just put, we're just going to type simple reset because we're going to do this within uh, your program. We'll go ahead and create it. It's under the controller. Another thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to be able to control the speed, right? So we're going to add another rung. Let's put a move instruction in. You don't have to do it this way. This is one way where you can change uh, the values without going into the tags by looking. We're sitting here and watching your uh, regular ladder. So command. Oops. Let's do a short tag. And do this. Drag one down here. And we want to grab the last one. Where we the speed in which we want to run it to. If you remember the older ones, you'd have to type in between uh, 32, 670, yeah, 670, 676. 760, somewhere in there. I can't remember the number now. I haven't used those in a long time. Right now, the commanded frequency is zero. Let's run this thing at 32 hertz. So you type in 3200. Now, when we go to start this drive, remember, we're still faulted. So let's pull up this. Go to the drive. Minimize this window. Drag it down here just a little way so you can watch it clear it's faulted right now we're we're online we're connected with the drive there's no errors I'm gonna toggle the reset and you'll watch it be able to reset so the drive is no longer in fault it's clear it's ready to start let's scroll this down just a little further we'll go up the top we're at 32 Hertz and we're gonna go ahead and start the pump or yeah the pump the drives running Within two seconds, it got up to 32 hertz. Like I said, you can change this on the fly. We're going to do 15, oops, not point. We're going to do 15.13 hertz. Type in 15.13. Drops it to 15.13 hertz. That is how you set up the PowerFlex 525. There's a lot of options uh, that you can choose from. Uh, you can choose the direction. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can change your Excel. Uh, and by 
but we're going to go look at these tags and I'll show you what I mean. All your output tags, you have your stop, your start, your jog, clear false, we use that one. Forward, default is what it's at now, but if you wanted to, you could just come in here and do it right within the tags and leave it in there. Excel, decel, frequency for when you're using terminal blocks and you can set it. So if I'm using, if I want frequency one and the system calls for the operator or whatever phase it's in, they can switch it there or you can just program it so it's all done with an Ethernet cord and you have no controls to the floor and that's why I love these drives. Anything I can take away from the operator from having wires running across the floor and just giving them an HMI to run it with is a lot better. In my opinion. Other people have other opinions. But that's, that's just my opinion alone. Information back from the drive. Ready. Active. Commanded direction. Actual direction. Accelerating? Is it decelerating? Is it faulted? Is it at reference speed? Um, and it also shows what your current output frequency is. These are all wonderful things. The 525 is a very beautiful drive in my opinion and I use quite a few of them. I hope this little tutorial helped you guys out. If you have any questions, please leave me some good feedback or negative feedback. If you didn't like it, let me know if I can help you out any other way. Again, thanks for watching.